Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let all rejoice. Good morning, you can see it. Good morning. I would like to welcome everyone to the Youth Day of the Black Issues Convention. Our distinguished panel are some of the youth media symposiums, young advocates from various cities. Elise Pierce attends Irvington High School in Irvington, New Jersey. Alonzo Hamlet attends University in North New Jersey. Ronnie Kelman attends Shabazz in North New Jersey. And Ray Monta attends Immaculate Conception in Irvington, New Jersey. And Hadia Austin attends Shabazz in North New Jersey. <laughs> Again, I'm Aisha Rivera from Central High School, North New Jersey. And today I'll be a lottery. Before we talk about strengthening families and communities, let's build upon what makes us strong already. Where are some of the strengths of black and Latinos family and communities? Okay. I would like to answer that question first. I feel a strength in the African American community would be the church because it is a place where we all can come together and it's more of a place where there isn't such hating and downgrading. It's a place of faith. We all know when the church congregation comes together, it's a place where we we get to share our needs and our beliefs and be who we are. And I feel that church is a strong place in the black community as well as the earth. Uh, I think I can agree with my colleague, Ms. Hadia Austin, that there is a great strength in the churches. It's not really outside the church, but inside the church you can be who you are, and that's where we can really come together. I think in our community that we do have strengths with the churches, the schools, the libraries, and any other community uh, entities, meaning we hold meetings at community centers, we have bingo nights for the elderly, we have daycare for the ch children, and those are one of the strengths that we can build and have more of in our black community. Um, the next question is, in your opinion, how important is it for young people to have strong families and communities around them? Who would like to answer that? Anyone else? Well, um, I think there's only so much learning you can do in school. Everything else is, uh, takes place at home, pretty much. Um, English doesn't teach you uh, uh, more. It doesn't teach you respect or um, kindness. And um, I learned that from my mom. Um, and I'm sure everybody else can, too. Um, I don't think I go to school to, to learn to be a better person. I, I learn to improve my mind, but I don't learn to improve my spirit and my, my, um, my soul and my heart. Well, the youth need family. We can't do it alone. We need someone to guide us, to show us the routes that we need to go to be, so, to be someone successful. As a way, as family, well, in a family, there's a mother, there's a father, there's a brother, there's a sister, there's a grandmother, a grandfather. Those are the steps that we have to follow in our community. We need someone that's a grandmother that can help us with certain things. We need a man figure that's in our family to help us with our problems. Our mothers can't do it. Our mothers can't raise our sons. The fathers have to be the man in the household to raise our sons. We need to step up and we need to be fathers in our family. Not meaning having kids, but meaning to step up to the plate and to tell your elected officials or your community that we need change in our schools, our community, our city, our county, our state, and our United States of America. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. For me, the definition of a strong family would be a family that sets in values and traditions in your home because that's what's missing in the urban area. We're not giving our children values. 
We let our children do things that in the past children wouldn't do. It's like a generation shift. And I feel that's that what we need to bring back in order to make a stronger family, make a stronger bond between the children. Communication is the key. Because to actually be a family, you, you got to express yourself with your children. Let your children know what's going on with you and talk to your children. Because things could be going wrong and you not talk to your child makes the situation even worse. You can help your children. Just whatever leisure time you have, no matter if you're working or not, spend time with your children. That's how the family is strong to me because there isn't a perfect family, but you can always make it better than what it is. What are some of the most pressing issues that families today have to deal with, and how do you suggest we deal with these issues? Who would like to answer that? Um, some of the issues are in fact teen pregnancy, gangs, and so forth. What we gotta do is, black families, what we have to do, we have to watch out for that. That's the first thing. Because you can see the signs. If you let your, your child come home, if your child come home at 11 o'clock at night, that is just wrong. You need to stop, you need to sit them down, you need to be like, where have you been? You need to, you need to yell at them. That's, that's my opinion. It's not only the parents, 
you got to think about the teachers because some teachers they don't want to know you they don't want to they don't even care about you they'll just give you something and let you learn the lesson by yourself and that's wrong first thing we need to do we need to keep pick those teachers out of the schools we need to find teachers that actually care and will do something I heard of a lot of those teachers that are not doing it, the things that parents aren't doing, but what about the children who go home to no family, no parents, because their parents are not doing their parents have a drug addiction and stuff like that. That's, that may be the reason why parents are not being involved. What would you say to that child? Or how they can get over their issues and go to the home? Me personally, in my opinion, if I, if I saw a student like that, if I, ran a, if I was a principal of a school and I saw a student like that, I would pull him aside and say, what do you need? If you need, if you need somebody to be with you on Saturdays, go to a football game, I'm there. If you need someone to come help you with your math homework, I'm there. If you need counseling, if you need anything at all, I'm there. That's how I deal with it. You're blind, to what's go you're, you're blind to what's going on around you. You can see signs of, of a bad home if you look close enough, but it, it's, it's more effort to help somebody than to leave them alone and, and, and let them be miserable. And that's what a lot of people are doing. I guess what to say to that child, if I was um, a person that holds a position, I would try to find that child any and every resource to help that child with their problems. If they don't have a home, well, we will call some entities and we will try to find out what can we do to place that child in an environment that the child will like, love. Uh, we will try to find any and every possible ways to help that child with schooling, whether it's in grammar school, high school, college. Um, if the child has a record, we will try to work with that child to understand, to get deep into his personal life to find out why he's doing, he or her is doing the things that they are doing, the reason why they're acting out, the reason why they're cutting school, the reason why they're smoking or running away from home. We were trying to sit down and actually get deep in a conversation that may take four to six or eight hours. Most people don't understand when you are meeting with a child that has needs, they're ready to sit down for 30 minutes and think that you're going to express all your needs in 30 minutes. It don't work like that. When we express our needs, we're coming to you with problems. We're coming with you with facts. We're coming with you with straight up problems that we need help with in our community and our schools. Um, I would like to add to that because the topic that you chosen to like base your questions on it's kind of sort of my life story. I didn't have, well, my mother and my father in my life, but I was raised by my grandmother. And I, as a child, I often looked out to positive people in my community to help me and guide me. Because that's why, that's why I feel like I've grown to be such a person I am today. Because no matter if you have hardships or anything like that, you can still make it through. And my grandma was drilled in my mind that education was the key. She helped me see those things. I mean, and that's the thing about to me what a strong family was. She she didn't have a lot and we struggled as well, but she gave me the love that I needed, that I didn't get. And I feel that when children are in those situations, they look out to the people in the community. Like I had the woman next door, she would help me with my math homework. Or I had the woman downstairs, she would do my hair. I had the my uncles who helped me, they were like my father figure. So I looked up to them because I didn't have that at home. So that's what I mean. Well, y'all go, baby. Love as a rolling 
and see the road and see. 